what is there uh, in, about childhood, and as you uh, go from school age to adolescence, and then you get into adulthood in the setting of diabetes? <laughs> but in childhood, most children with diabetes actually have better diabetes control than adolescents. Who's here afraid of adolescents with diabetes? Who here has been an adolescent? <laughs> At least you've outgrown adolescence, right? You can't outgrow diabetes, but you do outgrow adolescence. So children with diabetes actually are, are couched within the family environment and they can do well because families help them in the management. As you merge into uh, teenagehood, you actually naturally and normally need to separate from the family, separate from the parents, and do more things more independently. But we need to make sure there is scaffolding. We need to make sure that there is an infrastructure of support for those kids as they're, as they're um, inching out on their own. They still need family support. And as you enter adulthood, certainly the parent is in charge of their diabetes self-care. But there always is the need for family involvement because no matter what the age of the individual with diabetes, Diabetes is not a do-it-yourself condition. So there are the cost of all these demands. There are physical demands, multiple daily doses of insulin, uh, checking sugars, counting carbs, exercising, treating loads. I mean, there's nothing spontaneous about diabetes. Counting supplies, sick day management, need for frequent medical follow-up. And there are emotional demands associated with diabetes. It is forever. You are different than your peers and your colleagues. It's frustrating, it's overwhelming. Why, uh, why me? There's a fear of highs, there's a fear of lows. There's coping with the diabetes police, so-called miscarried helping. Um, what ones want to do their best to help an individual and their family with diabetes? But the way you try to help is so critically important. Um, when a child is a high blood sugar, what do you think is the most common response of the parent? The child's blood sugar is 350 at the school. What's the comment of the parent? What did you eat? Well, I, I offer you an alternative. If your child has a high blood sugar, we know during growth and development, blood sugars naturally rise because during puberty, you need more insulin. If your child has a blood sugar of 350, you need to say, boy, you must be growing. Because it's much nicer than saying, what did you eat? The best of all is saying nothing. Less is more. The idea that you know that sugar is 350 gives you the tools to bring that sugar down. If the sugar is 350 and it feels like it's a punishment, that number of 350 sometimes turns into a 150, right? It could be a 150. Or there's no checking at all. And what do I mean when it turns into a 150? The three is just left off in the report. And that's normal, adaptive behavior. These are not manipulative teenagers or children. That's normal, adaptive behavior because these children want to please you all more than anybody else. So the best thing you can do is say nothing. That data is important information and that's what we need to optimize control.